On the 26th day of October, Halloween gave to me 26 father's eyes, 25 nipples biting, 24 demons moaning, 23 heads skittering, 22 detectives thrilling, 21 wieners stretching, 20 zombies climbing, 19 Richards cheesing, 18 undead trains, 17 morticians regaling, 16 Vincents cracking, 15 Lees counting, 14 brides abiding, 13 Carfax abbeys, 12 fathers stripping, 11 au pairs drowning, 10 children creeping, 9 Roddy's seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways bending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey there, happy Monday everybody, uh, and, and happy October 26th. It is uh, naturally the 26th day of our 31 days of Halloween as well. Um, and man, to start the week, our final week, it is only right that we begin it with uh, one of the great horror films of all time, uh, and that is, of course is Rosemary's Baby. You know, obviously we've been going through a bit of a spat of... Uh, or spate, rather. Not a spat. We're not arguing. Uh, a spate of movies that uh, in, involve the devil and possession. And Rosemary's Baby is a little light on the possession end of things, but pretty heavy on the devil stuff. Um, it is the story of uh, R- Rosemary, uh, who with her, uh, her, her husband Guy uh, Woodhouse, move into uh, an amazing ab- uh, apartment... In New York City, uh, John uh, Cassavetes plays Guy. Guy is a struggling actor who, uh, when he and Rosemary move into this building, pretty quickly suggests that they have a baby. And the idea uh, of the whole film is that Ma- uh, Rosemary is the somewhat unknowing uh, receptacle of for the devil's child. And as she gets pregnant and goes through this pregnancy, like there are neighbors that are constantly checking in on her and bringing her shit to eat and drink. And there's uh, a, the doctor that has been recommended to them uh, who is telling them like, hey, this horrible pain that you're experiencing consistently throughout your pregnancy, no big deal. Don't even worry about it. Uh, that'll go away in a couple of days. And... You know, we talked about this with The Thing, that there are very few movies that are able to capture a sense of paranoia and dread. And, I, you know, when I was talking about The Thing, I didn't really consider Rosemary's Baby. However, on this most recent rewatch of it, uh, which I did both for pleasure and so that I could talk somewhat intelligently about it when I do this... Um, you know, the the thing is, that movie is just steeped in female paranoia. That That's entirely what the film is. It is a woman who is unable to trust her husband, her, her neighbors, her doctor. And it, to the point where she eventually, like, runs away to try to get another doctor's opinion who just refers her right back to... Dr. Saperstein, who uh, is is a, a world-renowned obstetrician or whatever. Uh, the doctor who betrays Rosemary, by the way, played by Charles Grodin. Uh, always love to see him pop up in something. And it's kind of crazy to live in a world where the themes present in Rosemary's Baby of, of men controlling not only a woman's destiny, but a woman's body that this message uh, first (laughs) made it to the screen in 1968. And here it is, you know, 52 years later, and we're wrestling with the same things. You know, no one said this culture learned shit fast. And Rosemary's Baby, despite the fact that, you know, Roman Polanski would later uh, be accused of, you know, some of the creepier behavior in Hollywood history... Uh, and that's, boy, that's a, a, a dark list of uh, of behavior. 
But, uh, you know, it somewhat fell off. But in the 70s, when he made Rosemary's Baby, he was making some of the best genre films, to be sure. Like, Repulsion uh, was one of his first films. And that's a genre film. Uh, same with uh, Captain Kronos, uh, Vampire Hunter. Um, or, is that right? Did he do Kronos, or was it Fearless Vampire Hunters? Uh, we will get that straight. Um, but regardless, like, uh, so, you know, written and directed by Roman Polanski, Polanski was doing super interesting work at this time. Um, and, uh, it was the fearless vampire killer. Sorry, Captain Kronos, uh, uh, confused for a second, but, uh, but Polanski was doing like the, this super interesting, um, really you know, like the Fearless Vampire Hunters is a bit silly, but but both Repulsion and Rosemary's Baby are these very serious uh, and very thoughtful pieces about how, um, you know, the, like women can can be uh, in the case of Repulsion, like break down and go crazy with anybody noticing because of the outward appearance. Um, and and Rosemary's Baby takes another kind of feminist approach to the material. Where it says not only can women kind of go crazy without anyone knowing, uh, sometimes the world around them can drive them that way. Like Rosemary reacts, you know, in a subdued manner to the world around her. Like she should be more frantic and crazy than she is. This is one of the few characters that's like, will somebody just give her a pill? It, like that never enters the equation. It's like you you need to be. On the balcony, shouting below you to get help if if need be, and uh, of course, all this culminates in her actually having the child. Uh, very famously, uh, there is the line about a, you know he has his father's eyes. Uh, what are you talking about? Guys' eyes are normal. Um, Mia Farrow is is fantastic in this movie. By the way, um, when she is like when the reveal happens and you. There is this moment, like, when the movie, you, you, uh, if you're like me, you remember the ending of the movie happening after the reve the reveal of the eyes. But in reality, the ending of the movie is this society of witches uh, basically convincing Rosemary, like, you need to be a father, or not a father, you need to be a mother to your child. Whether or not you believe in, you know, the Antichrist and all that. Uh, forget us yelling, the year is one. Over and over and hail Satan and whatnot. Forget all that. You, We just need a, a, a mother to this child. And that's kind of what she becomes, you know? Like, she, she eventually gives in and fits in. Uh, and I've always wrestled with the ending of that movie in terms of its thematic resolution. Um, I think it is a, a, a sort of a horrific ending if you ex accept the fact that Rosemary is just going to allow what has been done to her to kind of go by so that she can care for this child. Um, anyway, I, I don't know, but uh, it is a, a disturbing idea to say the least. It is a uh, an intensely creepy movie um, with a lot of great performances in it, not just Mia Farrow and, and Nick Cassavetes as, uh, as Guy, or John Cassavetes rather, not Nick Cass Cassavetes. But, uh, like, there's great old actors like Ruth Gordon as uh, the the neighbor Minnie uh, Castavet is, is fantastic in it. Um, you know, just this laundry list of great, like, character actors like Ralph Bellamy and Elisha Cook Jr. and Emmeline Henry. And, you know, it, it, it's really... Uh, I, you know, to call Rosemary's Baby a masterpiece might be underselling it a little bit, but it's it's just one of those movies that when you watch it, you're like, man, this is so perfectly formed, you know? I don't like this movie, but there's this one scene. It's just this movie is quality uh, front to back. I am not, in fairness, the most um, affected by movies about the devil and whatnot just because of my own belief system, but it is... Uh, for me, it's less a movie about the horrors of Satanism or whatever than it is the the horrors of a woman losing her ability to choose for herself. You know, and I don't mean to get political, but it's a very political movie. Um, 
And that's really something, you know, few horror movies at the time were doing, certainly, you know, in the, in the same year, uh, you had Night of the Living Dead come out, and that was of that ilk. Um, but, but not a ton, you know, there weren't a, a lot of movies that were uh, certainly as feminist as, as this movie is. Um, and it's, it's really a, a, an interesting movie as both a period piece and, and just as one of the great horror films. Like, if you've never seen Rosemary's Baby and you've always heard about it, you need to see it because it's really good. It's like, believe the hype. Um, and if you have seen Rosemary ba- Rosemary's Baby and it's been a while, uh, I know for me I was struck by how relevant the movie still is, which is frustrating because the the... Ideas presented in that movie seem incredibly basic to just human dignity and and self determination, uh, and yet we have not fulfilled uh, our end of the bargain. Um, it, it, we we still live with the same sins that Rosemary's Baby uh, presents, which is uh, you know a, a largely patriarchal society that continues to try to make decisions for what and what is not proper female behavior. Um, it, yeah, it, it's a powerful movie and it's really good. Like seeing an old man yell, the year is one hell Satan. He is risen. You know, that kind of shit. Eh, that's fun. I like seeing old people, uh, get into Satanist frenzies. I plan to do it myself in a few years. Once, uh, I'm of a proper age. Um, anyway, folks, that's it. That's Rosemary's baby. You should really watch it. <laughs> you know, hot take Ransdell serving up fresh, uh, this morning. Um, if you haven't seen it, Rosemary's Baby, pretty good, pretty good movie. Uh, so check it out. Also, if you want to, uh, tell me what your experience with Rosemary's Baby was, uh, then by all means, drop me a line at Bo, that is B-O at legionpodcasts.com and, uh, shoot me an email over there. And, uh, if it's interesting or, uh, even if it's not, I'll, uh, I'll read it here, uh, in one of our final episodes. So, uh, that's it. Uh, I'll see you back here tomorrow for the 27th film in our, our 31 days of Halloween. And until then, have yourselves a great Monday, have a spooky Monday and have a a great start to the week. And I'll see you right back here uh, tomorrow. All right. Bye everybody. Bye.